Welcome to another Toy Photography Shot Breakdown. This one features a, a bunch of myth Mythic Legions, uh, as well as this big-ass moose here. Uh, I'm going to dispense with the fast-forwarding setup shot and just get right into the, the breakdown of the shot. Uh, there's about nine Mythic Legions in this. Uh, they're all set up on this moss mat that I use for a lot of forest bases. Uh, you don't even see the floor in this shot, but it's always a good idea to... You know, set up a little bit more, a little bit extra in case your shot changes and you do end up having some of that show. Uh, in the back here, I've got pieces of cardboard that are from Ikea, Ikea Detolfs uh, with my trees set up on them. Trees that I bought from diorama makers, trees that I bought from Target stuck in there. Big, heavy rock um, that uh, is also propped up on these pieces of cardboard so you can, you know, they're, they're very strong, uh, very useful things. This is a forest scene, uh, so I have an atmospheric light that is my big softbox with a green gel in it. Just to give it that sort of forest canopy uh, feel. Uh, that's a piece of cinefoil, we've talked about that before. It's flat black tinfoil, basically it keeps the light from bouncing onto the screen and reflecting off the screen. My key light is this loom cube uh, in place of the sunlight with a barn door on it, It's it's sort of peeking through these leaves, uh, these aquarium leaves that I bought from Petco, I think. Uh, they are focused on Artemis, on the moose, uh, as she is the key figure in this. Uh, but of course it spills over onto other things as well. The background is another forest tree scene with the light coming in like a morning light. And this softbox over here is meant to replicate that sort of morning light coming through the trees and I've actually set up three extra trees that I have you don't see them they just act as sort of a block flag to block the lights a little bit from coming through too much and making it more like a forest uh, light coming through the forest this is a reflector with a slight blue gel on it to bounce a little light onto the front of the figures uh, but still keep it looking shadowy as if they were in a in a forest surrounded by trees and, and not too much bright light coming. The same thing with this Loom Cube panel. It's dialed to a blue and it's bouncing off a white card to also give it that in the shadow type of feel. Um, you know, shadow isn't necessarily blue, but it's kind of got that feel to it. It's a little bit of artistic license there. You're gonna see some of the figures posed a little strangely here. Those white cards are to bounce some light up onto the bottom of the moose's chin and to these elves in the front. They're posed a little weird because you don't see the bottom of them, and I really wanted their height to be adjusted uh, to allow a little bit more of the moose and Artemis to come through, but they still look like they're marching naturally in the end shot. You'll see in front here there's these little 3 2 one blocks, these little metal blocks that have uh, ferns in them right there. Also propped up to, you know, just show in the shot and you don't see those obviously in the shot this is what we're looking at in camera you can see I've got a four second exposure uh, I've got some fog that's gonna go in here I really want it to dissipate a lot f22 uh, there's a lot of depth to this I want to get a lot of the background figures and a lot of foreground figures fairly in focus so it's a very narrow aperture Okay, we're uh, done shooting and we're going to move into post-processing now. I use Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom to do my post-processing. Uh, they are, you can get both of those for $9.99 a month uh, through Adobe and you get, I think, 20 gigabytes of space with that um, uh, on the cloud. So it's a great to, to back up your hard drive, even if you have an external or use your internal hard drive to save your photos. It's always good to have uh, cloud backup just in case anything happens to those hard drives. Uh, and it can. Uh, for $19.99 a month, you can get both of them and a terabyte of space, which will add up if you're using raw files or saving large Photoshop files after a while. Either way, whether you go with those or you go with uh, Procreate or GIMP or something like that to uh, do your post-processing, some sort of tool, and I recommend something on a desktop or laptop uh, software over uh, phone editing. You can do phone editing. It's great. Uh, you're just going to get a wider range of ability with a desktop uh, software. So let me show you what my process is in Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, we'll get started with that right now. 
So I brought in about uh, 50 shots from probably anywhere from four or 500 shots that I, I took uh, over the course of a couple of days. These aren't all in one session. Uh, and there's reasons that uh, there's that even that many. Um, you know, I started out with a, a layout like this. Uh, there was some things I didn't like about it. I had a Styrian up here, like real close to the camera, and he was just kind of, you know, disappearing in this rock. And uh, I really wanted some more of the gold elves in here to really make it look like it was a, an entourage of these elite elves, you know, guarding Artemis. So uh, I quickly abandoned that layout, went to another layout uh, here, and moved some things around. Uh, added another elf. Um, here, I, I didn't like this layout. I didn't like uh, Bardrick being cut off for the front. Uh, I kind of was wasting this good-looking, uh, soft goods cloaked ranger elf in the background. And I wanted to get him more prominent in here. And I didn't notice for at least <laughs> three rounds that this, this uh, harness was sticking straight out, whereas should be sort of laying against his body, or at least hanging down from his body. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't even notice that when I'm looking at different things like the position of this arm, which I changed, um, the way, the motion in some of these walking poses and things like that, and just the overall composition, and I just completely missed it. I finally took it out in this layout, um, but as I moved it backwards, I noticed this this big empty space, and I really wanted again look to make this look like it was a large troop of you know forest people with elves and things. Um, so I wanted to get more elves in there. I had another elf, so um, the next setup, I went and added that back here, uh, and I like this. This is pretty much where I was uh, with the final as far as positioning of figures goes. Um, then it was just down to light. So eventually I ended up about here. Um, and this gave me the, a nice, a deeper forest feel with the light kind of coming through the, the canopy of the trees. Not so much coming into a clearing like the other, the other one felt like. Quick side note, I shoot in the raw file format, uh, which I recommend, but, uh, it is a large file format. Um, it contains a lot of data. This is a 47 megabyte file right here. You can also set your camera to shoot in JPEG, uh, usually a high, medium, or low quality JPEG. The lower you go, uh, the less information is going to be in that image. Uh, meaning that with a raw file, if I have a shadowy area, chances are the data and the detail is in there that I can pull out uh, using tools in Lightroom or Photoshop. Uh, when you've got a JPEG, uh, and the lower quality you go, the less data there is in there. However, it will save you space. Raw files are large. This is a 47 megabyte file. If this were a high-end JPEG, it might be half that, 23 megabytes. Uh, and it, the lower you go, the, the less space it's going to take up in your hard drive, but the less information you'll have to work with uh, when you're editing the image. Okay, it's back to it. Do it that way. All right, I'm going to show you quickly... Um, the development area of this. Uh, this has already been manipulated, but I will show you some of the things that I did to this. So the first thing on the top of the color treatment area is the white balance. And that um, gives you white balance and temperature and tint. It's all about the, the white and the light in the picture. Uh, you can change this to go from cooler, bluer tones. I mean, you can really go nuts with it. Um, it's really you're looking for subtle changes or you can really take it to the yellow end of things, spectrum of things and, you know, give it a more warm, you know, morning sun type of feel to it. It's very sunny and very friendly and very happy where I wanted a little bit more, not foreboding, but a little more deep forest feel to it. So I went more with the blue temperature. And there are settings in here that you can use uh, auto daylight cloudy shade. <clears throat> You'll figure out which which you like. Tint, uh, you can tint this from, you know, more of a green shade, which again, with large movements can get a little weird. It's a subtle, usually a subtle change from whatever you shot. Um, I skip down to presence at that point. I go to clarity and clarity is, does stuff like this. Like, let's say you're getting into uh, some details uh, like this, this pauldron that she's wearing. If I take the clarity down, um, even subtract it. Well, 
even just to where it was shot, it looks pretty good. And then you bump that up and suddenly you're seeing a lot of detail. Now you can go overboard with that and it, things, certain things can start to get a little crispy. So you don't want to go too far with that. I usually keep it around the 50 mark or less than 50. You'll see how that sort of changes some highlights and things like that in, in the image too as I go from here to here. Um, so that's why I start with this and then I go into my tone because uh, I may not have to, you know, expose it as much. That clarity may bring some out some highlights that I don't have to really change the highlights too much. So there's a lot there's a lot to this. Uh, I'm not going to go into it in great detail here, but this is where I do my basic development for color correction, tone, clarity, uh, hue, saturation, things like that. Once I get this done. Until my final edit, I don't really do a lot of manipulation of the color and things like that. It's more, uh, I'll show you in Photoshop, it's more just pulling the uh, elements of the different images together into one cohesive image. So that's that uh, in Lightroom. Uh, the great thing about Lightroom is you can do all that development work on one image uh, and you can go and say copy all these settings that we've just gone through. The treatment, your white balance, your exposure, vignetting, distortion, sharpening. You can copy all that and then you can go to your other files in that um, in that shoot and this this green is one one shoot so I know that these are all the same. The camera hasn't moved, nothing's moved in the image <clears throat> and you can apply it to that. You can simply just paste it onto all of these. Select them all and hit uh, command uh, shift command V and it will paste all those development uh, points onto those images so they'll all be cropped the exact same way and they'll all have the same um, you know tone white balance and things like that so that's a great thing about Lightroom um, so then I'll just select my star rating is basically to tell me like this is my base image this is what I really want to use as my 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 main image to start out with and then there's elements from these other images the three stars have some bigger elements some bigger areas that I want to use and the two stars are usually something that I just want to pull a little piece of something from here and there. Uh, it really means only something to me, but it helps me organize. So I'll take all these uh, starred images, and uh, I'm not going to grab them all now because I've already done this, and just go to e File, Export, and then I'm going to export these as JPEGs at this point. So I've done all the manipulation I need to do. I pulled out what I needed to pull out of the raw files. I want to work with smaller files now in Photoshop. I don't want to have seven layers of 50 megabyte images uh, to make that file huge. If they're big enough so that I can print what I need, you know, there's plenty of and pixel depth there to use in Photoshop. So, all right, in Photoshop, I am going to go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And then I'm going to hit Browse. And I'm going to pick the last set of images that I just exported uh, from that last shoot and hit open and so there's all six of these images that are going to be brought into separate layers over here in my layers panel i hit attempt to automatically align source images just in case i know that my tripod has not moved uh, i hope that nothing is moved in the set with any of the figures or anything like that um, generally it hasn't but i just hit attempt to automatically align source images anyway uh, just to make sure everything's like tightly line lined up okay once uh, that feature has brought in your layers, your, your different images on different layers and, and aligned them or made sure they were aligned. Uh, I'm going to take my four star image, which was 8218, and I'm going to move that to the top. I'm just going to mark that with a blue. Sometimes I'll just you know name it like base or something like that. Just so I know that that's my base image. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to kind of go through the other layers and see what I like. So. One of the things I liked about uh, this layer was the fog that I got up in here. Uh, it really helps to recess and give some depth to these characters, makes them look a little bit further back. Um, and this one as well. So you can see how more dense the fog is in, in this one than it is in that one, but I like them both for different reasons. I'm gonna take both of those files and move them up above my base file. I'm gonna turn off the dense fog one. And then what I'm gonna do is what I want to do is I want to bring some of this fog into this base file. Okay, I want to take some of the fog from this image and bring it into here. Uh, so I'm going to turn on this 
fog file. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and hit add layer mask. Okay, you can see that tool tip pop up there. And that's going to add another white box next to the image. When you've clicked on the image, you're working on the image. When you've clicked on the layer, uh, layer mask, you're working on the layer mask. Okay, so white, in this case, in the case of a layer mask, white allows everything through. Um, black allows nothing through the mask. So if I were to take a brush uh, with a black 100% uh, opacity brush and brush over this fog layer, I'm going to get rid of the fog on that layer. Like it's going to bring the base file through because what I'm doing is I'm blacking out parts of this fog file. It's not really what I want to do. <clears throat> so the way I do this is I fill this entire uh, white mask area with black. Okay, so there's just the option delete, fill it with black. So now you can't see any of it. If I turn that layer on and off, it doesn't matter because you're not seeing any of that layer. It's all masked out. Then I change my color to white, grab a brush, nice soft round brush, bring the opacity down to maybe 78, 77. <clears throat> and then I'm going to paint in the fog into this image, into my base image. Now I'm not actually painting on my base image. It's just allowing it... Uh, the fog in this layer to show through and that's all it's allowing is just that upper right hand corner and towards the center it's just allowing that light to pop through i can switch to black if i want to bring back bring down some of the light like over here and manipulate it that way if i if there was too much light on her face if there was too much fog on her face or something i could take a black um, brush and just hit you know, a little bit of her face if there's too much fog in there, but it, this looks good. This is what exactly what I wanted. Uh, so it's taking a little bit of fog from this image and bringing it into my base image. This denser fog, I kind of like, because I, I kind of want to recede this guy even more and make it look like, you know, as you go further back, there's an atmosphere to this this forest, and the further back you go, the less you can see. So I'm also going to add a layer, layer mask to that. Hit uh, option delete to fill that with black and make that disappear and then I'm gonna grab a brush change the brush color to white and bring the opacity down to about let's say 50 we're just gonna hold it down once and sort of bring in some more of the fog back here and just recede him a little bit more um, so I like that you can see the difference there and there and then if you turn them both off you can really see the difference between two of them. you can't get a shot with the perfect amount of fog everywhere you want it to settle it's just not going to happen so if you use atmosphere like this um like I, I if you look at the lower left of this one down here um i want to get that fog into the main image so i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to add a layer mask i'm going to fill it with black change the color to white on a white brush and i think 53 percent is good and then i'm going to paint in some of the fog back here And again, the more you go over it, the more you click on it, the more dense, the more you're going to bring through. And you can also adjust the opacity if you want to just bring a little less through. So that's uh, the reason I do so many shots with the fog. And, um, you know, it usually only takes three or four layers to do this. And you can see if you look at the layers where uh, the white is coming through uh, or the gray, depending on the, the opacity of the white and allowing it through to the space uh, that's that's pretty much from the other images that's that's what's coming through um, and where you see checkerboard is, is what the translucency of it is so it's not fully opaque um, a lot of this base image is still making up the majority of the image so that's why your your alignment has to be right if anything is off you know you'll get a you'll get a, a blurred line you know somewhere if, if, if a figure had moved you're gonna see a ghosted image of something if you you know, if you used one layer where it's it's a different position than another layer. So you got to be careful about that. Make sure everything doesn't move. <clears throat> Use a tripod for sure. Um, and that's that. Uh, I'm just going to jump over to the final file here and show you. Uh, this is the group. This is this is what I did on the final file. Uh, here's the masks that I use. Uh, it's a curved layer that uh, you can see. Uh, just kind of brightens things up and I didn't use that everywhere so I put a mask even on the curve layer just to allow certain places to be a little bit brighter 
this is a burn dodge layer that I won't go into, but maybe I will in another video uh, that allows you to do burning and dodging without uh, damaging your main file. Once I'm done with everything and I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit merge group and I'm going to bring the final uh, file together. That's where I'm going to go in and do things like touch ups and paint. If there's like little areas of, uh, you know, I want to fix this little uh, paint mishap on her hair or whatever, <clears throat> whatever, a little spot on her face or things like that. Uh, hair, dust, things like that go in there and use the healing brush to fix some of that stuff. Um, I'll do that on this layer. Then I do my secret sauce. Um, that comes out to something like this. Uh, and then as a final manipulation, I played around with some lens distortion just to give it a little bit more of a, you know, a little more of a fantasy feel, uh, just something a little more, you know, popping off the page. Uh, and that's it. I had the logo and that is the post-processing of this image. Really appreciate you guys checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you'd like me to go into anything in more detail in future videos. I'll see you next time, and as always, keep shooting your toys.